That was Jim Croce from 1972. Hi, my name is Alex Kovalenko, and I lived in Creighton Mine. From 1952 to 1955, I lived on Robert and French Streets. And again in 1964 to 1969, I lived on Lake Street. From 1955 to 1964, I lived in Dog Patch on what is now called Suzanne Street. I went to Waters 1D, Jesse Hamilton, Waters 1A, and Llewellyn Park Schools. For the next hour, I'll be doing a workshop on preserving photographs and memories. For the first part of the workshop, I'll go through a series of presentation slides, and then I'll open it up for a discussion in real time. Through my experience, I developed four concepts to guide my practice. Curate, conserve, consign, and consume. One, curate, the art of thoughtful selection. What do I keep? How do I select what I keep? Just so you know, I keep everything. Maybe too much as some might say, but to each their own. No matter what you select, always keep the originals. This especially applies to photographs which are printed. Keep the negatives. They store all of the original data that may be cropped or altered in the printing process. Identify your photographs with metadata or tags. W5. Who, what, where, when, and why. With digital photography, the image files automatically get metadata such as date, camera, location, and size but you still need to add some context, such as who, why, is there a story? You may have noticed a date in the upper right hand corner and some old photographs on this slide. Well, you'll see me in the old photographs and I'll tell you a bit of a story. Here I am on the MS Olympia, somewhere south of Greenland and the Atlantic Ocean. I was 17 months old and I don't remember this crossing. Yes, my mom was taller than my dad. We left England in the year that Elizabeth II ascended to the throne. My dad was coming to Canada to work at, you guessed it, Inco. We landed at the Alexandria Pier in what is now Old Montreal on May 26, 1952. We took a train to Sudbury after a brief stay in Manoa Lake we settled in Creighton Mine. My dad, Theodore, also known as Fred or Freddy, worked in number five shaft. And my mom, Rosa, Rosa Wenzel before she was married, cared for me, our home, and our family. Two, conserve. The art and science of preserving for posterity. I divide my stuff into two camps, physical, and electronic. In 2005, I switched from physical film to digital electronic photography. Since then, all of our photographs are native electronic. Today, everybody has a camera with all kinds of still and motion picture capabilities, not even dreamed about just a few years ago, let alone half a century ago. Each photograph now costs zero cents. So we are amassing photographs at a staggering rate, but I digress. I keep all of my physical items, including prints, negatives, slides, documents, etc., etc. The science of keeping stuff for a long time is pretty basic. Keep it dry, keep it cool, not too warm, not too cold, just right, keep it safe, Keep it in containers that don't deteriorate and affect your stuff. Use archival quality containers. And there's a lot more in the references. I keep all of my electronic items. For native electronic photographs, formats, resolution, and size are determined by the photographic device. 
I won't get into details here. Once again, there's a lot more in the references. Electronic files also have the concept of containers, be it the camera itself, a computer hard drive, backup drives, CDs, DVDs, and even the cloud. Yes, clouds are big business these days, and the wave of the future, certainly for corporate computing and storage. And the trend is happening for consumers such as you and I. Cloud examples are Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. Essentially, the cloud is somebody else's computer in storage and that you pay for month after month. And then there's Facebook, also a cloud, and it's free, but that's a whole other topic. Then there's the art and science of converting physical to electronic, or scanning. I'm in the process of scanning all of my physical photographs from positives and negatives. After that's done, you may think that I would discard the physical items. Well, no, not me. I'm keeping everything. I'm a purist. No matter how high the resolution, scanning doesn't yet capture all the details. Maybe when transporters are invented, then the scanners will be at the molecular and DNA levels. But once again, I digress. 1967 was a watershed year. Canada celebrated its centennial. I even went to Expo 67 in Montreal. Boy, what a time. The Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. Oh, for the last time. Oh, well. And I won the mathematics contest. Back then, I was in grade 11 at Llewellyn Park. As my contest prize, I got a week all expenses paid at the University of Waterloo. That was a big deal. And I went there along with all the other mathies, or mathematics people, from across Canada. Now here we are in front of an IBM 1620 computer, which was fed by punch cards. That's when computers filled rooms. And that's when I wrote my first computer program. And that's what I studied and practiced as my profession to this day and still going. Three. Consign, the art of distributing for durability. Make copies for friends and relatives. You increase the chances of survival. This is where selection is important. Copy the good and important. Electronic files should also be copied, but copy them in totality. We also call this making a backup. Always, always copy those photos from your phone and do it regularly. Cloud storage comes with built-in backup, as good as the reputation of the cloud provider, and commensurate with how much you pay. But I have my own 18 terabyte RAID device connected to my network, which is my own cloud, and I'm gonna need more. But I digress yet again. Once again, a lot more in the references. Also, don't forget public places, local museums, libraries, genealogy clubs. They may be more than happy to take some of your photographs and memories. If 1967 was watershed, 1989 was groundbreaking. Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. Although the internet had been around for oh, about 20 years, this breakthrough spawned what's called websites. Before then, we thought it was all about spiders. And it shaped the internet that we know today. By then, I had already been working at Bell Canada for 13 years. Meanwhile, back at Waterloo, some professors started a search company called OpenText. And that company would eventually become the number one content management software company in the world. At the same time, some might say coincidentally, I built my first electronic document or content management system at Bell. That system, or should I say a descendant of it, is still in operation to this day. Now that led to a partnership between me and OpenText that also remains to this day. 4. Consume. So why are we doing all this anyway? There's a whole host of reasons. Well, it all boils down to keeping memories alive. 
We put on shows, we tell stories, we write books, we make art, we frame photographs, we make movies. We do whatever we do to consume and present. We have a treasure trove of memories embodied in our collections. And now it's 2020. Just last month, I visited a crate and mine. Of course, I picked my blueberries. They were great. But I also made time to revisit and reminisce privately with old friends and with family. For my photograph collection, I was able to make a little show presenting the view then and now. Just look at how green it's become. Creighton Mine will last forever. It will last in groups such as Creighton Revisited, created by Audrey and kept alive by you and your children. And it will last with your photographs and memories. I'd like to show you just a bit of my experience in the photographs and memories business. My collections span albums, slides, suitcases, sorry, went out, suitcases, <laughs> shoe boxes, envelopes, we all have that stuff. And the electronic stuff. I manage mine with something called Photoshop Elements. It's a software product. And as of this minute, I have 46,682 images and counting. Now, my scanning project that you may have heard about, I've been writing about it on the Facebook, started last July in earnest. I actually started to think about it seriously when I purchased my scanner 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years ago, it took me a while. As with all my information management projects, I developed a process. Then I acquired software and the hardware, the scanner I was talking about. I created a register to track my progress, who, what, where, when, and why. And I'm continuing. So, now I would like to have a dialogue with you here today. Think about your interests, photographs, movies, papers, artifacts. What do you want to know about? What are your questions? I have all this stuff, where should I put it? Where can I get help? Are there any answers? Here's some wise advice. Wise advice from a friend. Whatever you're going to do with your photographs and memories, do it sooner than later because you may not get the chance later. Remember that invention in 1989 by Sir Tim? Well, now it seems that every kind of information is at your fingertips. Here are some references for your research. I got a kick out of the last one. How to store your data for a million years. I'll let you take a look at these and more on your own time. But for now, thank you for persevering through this part of the presentation. And now on to the workshop.